Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we have an amazing guest, Medi. She's a software engineer at Google, and I'm so excited to have her on this channel and ask her a lot of amazing questions and hopefully make it as educational and value packed for all of you. So keep watching till the end. Welcome, Medi. Yeah. Hi, super happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me, Sundas. It's amazing to see you in real life again. It's awesome to meet you as well. So what do you do at Google? You are a software engineer. How long have you been here? Can you tell us a little bit more? Yeah, um, I'm a software engineer. I've been at Google for more than three and a half years now. I work in Google ads. I work in uh, specifically retail ads. So if you want to buy like a dress or a ring or furniture or anything, and you go to Google search and enter that in, our features are what pops up for you. Amazing, that's really cool. As somebody who also works in search, and ads. <laughs> this is one of the coolest space to be in. Oh yeah, for sure. Like I actually used to be in Google search proper, then uh -huh. I switched teams, I moved to Google ads, and now I'm in search ads. So do you love more working on the ads side of the business versus the search only? Um, do you see a difference in terms of like the work culture, the work that you do? Yeah, for sure. I think culture wise, people are nice on both ends. Like I always, if I need help or if I want to like hang out with coworkers, everyone is so welcoming and so helpful. In terms of the actual work, I see pros and cons in both search and ads work. So for example, in search, I was on health search. Specifically, we made features that help people who want to search for doctor's appointments or COVID vaccines or things like that. Versus on ads, I'm making products for people who want to buy like shoes or clothes and other things. So ads is obviously much more revenue driven. We get more traffic and I do enjoy the, you know, being able to show my feature to more users. But I will say like, I really, really enjoyed working on search as well because everyone in health search was truly passionate about trying to get better access for healthcare and for yeah. uh, medicines to Americans and other people around the world. So pros and cons in both sides, but I genuinely enjoy working in both teams. Yeah, you know what, you said something and that really resonated with me because my husband is also in medicine and he's like truly passionate about his field. And I feel like that's like a general theme with like people, especially in healthcare and medicine, like they like truly feel passionate about the field and they really want to contribute and make this world a better place. One thing I really wanted to talk to you, you have a very impressive profile. <laughs> so if you thought like being a software engineer at Google is impressive, you should learn what her background is. All the internships, the gazillions of internships that you have done. Maybe we can start with like how long have you been at Google and then how did you get your job? Like what helped you? What internships? What background do you have? education wise and so on. Yeah, for sure. So I've been at Google full time for three and a half years. Before then, I went to MIT and I had a couple of internships throughout those times. Uh, so to summarize, I did work at a startup and then a middle sized company for my first two internships. And then I worked at Morgan Stanley, at Microsoft, at Amazon, and then IBM for spring and summer and other internships as well. In terms of what helped me get a job at Google, I would say definitely it's not necessarily like the name or anything of the internship. I think it's like me learning practical skills at the internships. For example, when I was at school, I only used Python and Java in all of my proper academic classes. Through all my internships, I was able to get exposure to things like SQL or C++ or C and things like that. So I think mm -hmm. having that practical experience really helps. I also did um, undergraduate research. So MIT has this really cool program where you can get research experience as a freshman or a first year or second year without previous coding mm -hmm. experience. And I didn't really have any. I took your you know high school CS class, that was it. Mm -hmm. So that really helped me get my feet wet into the world of coding and made me realize that this is something I could see myself doing for years and years and for the long term. Yeah. That also helps. And then finally, you know, practice for the technical challenges that interviewers will ask you. So leak code, hacker rank, all that good stuff, cracking the coding interview. I think one thing that really stands out in your profile is like, yes, you went to an amazing school. You did awesome internships. You got like big brand internships and it's great. Like all of those opportunities were not just handed to you. You actually put in the work to get those. There's misconception. Like when you go to such a big name school, like companies will come chasing you, but you still have to pass the coding interview. They are not going to hire you just because you go to that X school. So like, could you talk a little bit more about that? Like your interview prep and like how much work it involved to be able to pass that tech screen? Yeah, a hundred percent. Um, Yeah, like definitely going to name brand school will not guarantee you at all a good job. And as someone who 
lead code doesn't really come naturally to. It took a lot of work for me to get to the level where I could pass coding challenges. So I did many, 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 many lead code challenges when I was trying to interview prep. I also had friends white whiteboard interview for me. So mm -hmm. what that meant was they would ask me a question. I just pretend like they were interviewer and then I would like talk through the solution and write it out as though it was an actual interview. Right. In terms of benefits of going to like a bigger school, I will say um, we have career fairs. And even though a lot of the biggest companies don't do serious recruiting at the career fairs, I was able to get my first two internships because I went to the booths of those smaller companies at my school's career fair. So having that environment was made it really conducive for me to go job searching because otherwise I probably wouldn't have applied as early since the big career fair is in the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think that was definitely an advantage that I saw. That's awesome. Before we talk about interview prep and coding, I wanted to take a moment to thank Springboard who is sponsoring this portion of the video. Software engineering is a great career. But if you're just starting out and trying to figure out your technical path and looking for a high paying career that is in high demand, then you should look into machine learning and AI. An average entry level machine learning engineer makes about $152,000 in the US. Yes, it is one of the highest paying careers. So how do you become a machine learning engineer? Well, there are three ways you can go to school, get a master's or PhD. Second is you become a self-taught machine learning engineer where you teach yourself. And the third is to enroll in a bootcamp. None of these are bad options and it all comes down to your preferred learning style. Let's say if I were to go back to school, I will definitely consider a well-defined online bootcamp so I can learn part-time along with my full-time job. This machine learning and AI bootcamp specifically stands out as it's offered by Springboard and developed in partnership with the University of California, San Diego, which is top 10 ranked in the nation. There are four things that specifically stand out about this bootcamp. Number one, the curriculum is practical. It covers machine learning model development for structured and unstructured data, and also covers deep learning topics such as NLP and LLMs. Two, it emphasizes on hands-on learning. And if you watch some of my videos, you know I'm a big advocate on hands-on learning. And you will graduate from this bootcamp with a GitHub portfolio that you can show on your resume to hiring managers and recruiters. Three, you get access to excellent mentors, career coaches that will help you during and after the bootcamp, whether that is in helping you learn a topic or helping you in the job search. This is something that I would personally love. Number four, you graduate with a certificate that states University of California, San Diego on it, which is a top ranked university in US and globally. The bonus, there is job guarantee. So if you want to learn more about this bootcamp, check out the link in description below and use the code SUNDAS to get $1,000 off. Thank you, Springboard. Now let's talk about interview prep. I see a lot of like people giving advice on lead coding. Do you have like specific advice, the number of hours that you need to put in, the number of problems you need to do, hard, medium, easy, like what is your advice to people who are just working on figuring out like how to do lead code and how to get better at like technical interviews. I think one thing you mentioned is like the mock interviews and whiteboarding, that's great. When it comes to like the actual lead code prep, like what would you say? Yeah, I think honestly, the number of hours depends highly on the person. I don't actually know how many hours I did, but for example, the semester before I was recruiting full time, I think I lead coded at least like an hour or two, like every day for months. Months, okay. Because uh, I'm not that good. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's honest. good. It's not a natural thing to do, um, to solve all the problems in like yeah, yeah. five minutes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I would say in terms of difficulty, I guess speaking for someone who wants to do internship or new grad recruiting, I would say usually lead code medium is what companies would ask you. So I'd recommend focusing on easy to begin with and then medium for the most of it. And mm -hmm. then maybe like a couple of hards if you feel confident. Most companies won't ask you as many lead code hards, but mm -hmm. some definitely will. Awesome, cool. My favorite question, favorite topic, all the hype around generative AI. There is ChatGPT, Gemini, whatnot, gazillions of tools out there. A lot of them are targeting coding. And there's a misconception, I would say that people think that AI will replace, generative AI will replace like software engineer job because now it can do coding. What are your thoughts on that? I know we talked about this before and you said that you don't use it at your current job for coding yeah. and stuff. So like, I would love to get your POV. Yeah, it's my firm belief that software engineers will have a job as long as people can't fully specify what they want. So I think we'll have jobs forever. <laughs> but <laughs> to be more serious, I think Gen AI is kind of like other coding tools. It's, it's a tool like, yes, you can use it to enhance your coding and like be very much more productive, but I don't think it can fully replace 
a lot of the human aspects that go into Gen AI. For example, at Google, because we're such a big company, there's so many different like processes and so many different approvals mm -hmm. and so many different like parts of the stack that we have to touch in order to get a feature launched. So I would really want to see Gen AI try to handle all of that. Exactly. Personally. Get me all the permissions. Yes, Just please. one click and all the permissions are done. Exactly. So the point is, I think it's a really cool tool, but I don't think it will replace software engineering whatsoever. Amazing. Cool. My last question, and we'll close after this. What do you do for fun? And I know you also create content. Where can people find you? Yeah. Um, so yeah, thank you for mentioning that. I also post on Instagram, so you can find me at madeline.m.zang. Um, I post like a lot of coding content and memes. So if you want someone who doesn't take herself so seriously, follow me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. And in terms of what else I do for fun, um, I really like to run. I run every day. I ran a half marathon last year. I think running is very tied into like, you know, if if you are physically healthy, then you're also more likely to be mentally healthy. I, I also that. really like coding. Well, I guess that, oh, that's not for fun. Okay, that's you for can money. do coding for fun. Okay, we will take it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I also like <laughs> I also like playing board games, especially social deception games, because I love lying to my friends in the games, and I like escape rooms. So my friends and I will usually do like I think an escape room once every couple weeks at this point. That's like mostly what I do for fun. Thank you so much for spending time with us today and sharing so much knowledge. I hope like everybody who's watching this has gotten a lot of tips on like getting your first job, getting internships, <laughs> and also lead coding. <laughs> and Gen AI is not taking our jobs. So thank you so much for watching and thank you, Maddie. Yeah, thank so you great for to having have you. me. It's so good to see you and to talk to all of y'all. Awesome. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.